Hi, how's it? Uh, so it's evening time. I've just taken a shower, but I cannot uh, have dinner and just continue on with the night without having this particular conversation. I'm still under a lot of attack. Uh, yesterday I came very jocose, but like jokes aside, um, the death curse, the witchcraft that was slapped me day before last or night before last from this voodoo priest satanist in the United States of America is still like an operation and it's really wreaking havoc in my life in the sense that it's made me kind of uh it's made me wallow to a certain extent in despair the despair of which i comprehend thoroughly is going to pass it's gonna flee i'm probably gonna wake up tomorrow morning feeling better but these curses they take time to lift off you and during the season when they're in operation you will really feel like there's absolutely no way out that's just the way that a death curse operates and this guy in the us i did let you guys know that he pendulums between a death curse and a love curse because he's a self-practicing voodoo artist of sorts in the sense that he has like a voodoo shrine in his own establishment and he does these spells himself he does not pay anybody money to do the spells for him so because he's a self-practicing occult practitioner <clears throat> Uh, he just keeps on going back to the drawing board on me and the demons that afflict me are really quite voluminous. The only reason why the Lord is allowing this to happen is because he's letting him, it's like he is banking for himself a kitty bag, like a little piggy kitty, you know, those money boxes with the kitty uh, that you put coins in and ultimately when it reaches the brim, the fullness of itself, it's, it gets thrown on the ground, breaks it so that you can see how much money you saved. He's basically saving himself wrath in God's eyes. The Lord is letting him basically pack up money ecosystem my environment with as many demons as he wants to send me he's been given permission to do that so that when i survive this when i conquer this when i finally get to the other side the lord is then going to very merrily send him right back the exact same curses that he sent me <clears throat> That's why when they land on him, they're going to be tenfold over. It is because it will be literally all the accounts of sending me death curses that he will have sent me. And all of those demons that he sent me, they will go on him all in one. Like, it will be a barrage. So it's going to knock him out. Night before, last night, um, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me that he's going, he was found. That This is what the Holy Spirit said. He was found hanging in his space, in his place, where it is that he lives, where he sleeps. He was found hanging, uh, right, by whoever it is that found him. I stood in the gap, I prayed for him, but really, I've been standing in the gap and praying for that guy. It absolutely does nothing at all. So he is facing death, however, in the run-up to, he's sending me quite a lot of it. And how it is that these demons manifest is they cause me, like I said, quite the macabre constitution. I feel very despaired. And there are also physical ramifications in the sense that my... um. I've current like I woke up last night with this nosebleed not in the morning I blew my nose and there were like these rocks of blood coagulated blood in my left nostril um, from just basically a, a, like a, an affliction of my person by demonic entities while I slept and how that manifested was through me bleeding in this one nose and my uh, eye my left eye has just been hanging bow, 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 with pain the past 48 hours non-stop when I take a grand pa it subsides ever so slightly but it doesn't entirely go away so I guess I've been wise enough to not take uh, pain meds perpetually hoping to make this go away because I understand it's spiritual it'll leave as soon as I break through and I come out on the other side but I have to come here and talk about this not so much about this uh, menace that is busy with me in the US whose death date is nearing it is impending he will not survive what he's sending me he will not survive the suicide ideation he will not survive the barrage the attack the thing that he is sending me he will not survive it because of how much um how it will it'll literally be 10 times more than what it is that i have experienced that is what the lord said he's not going to survive it he's not going to be able to resist the devil's like urgings to resist so how can i uh describe this there's a uh, the lord uses to explain to me how this guy's gonna die he uses events even that have happened in my life before or to people that i knew that gave me stories my former best friend used to have this boyfriend in high school that she uh, dated. He wasn't in my school, but he was like outside of the school. He wasn't, he didn't attend with us in the same school. And this guy and my friend were dating, a uh, type establishment thing, whatever. They eventually broke up. And one day this friend of mine called me, uh, like came to school, or sort of kind of like bereft. And, you know, she was sniffling and crying. It was during, after they had broken up, it had been maybe like a year after they broke up. Uh, maybe they dated when she was like, in grade nine and it was now like grade 11 or whatever and let's say his name was muzi uh, she was like muzi passed away from a drug overdose 
from a drug overdose and I was like oh my goodness he used to do drugs and she was like I was surprised myself because I did not know that he was into uh, drugs well that was sad we comforted her we pampered her and it came and went and that was that right the lord uh showed basically showed me that the the death of this man is going to be like that of my former best friend's ex-boyfriend it's going to be a drug overdose now witchcraft is called pharmakia it is sorcery is called pharmakia because it is involvement in medicine basically you know like uh, a dark form of medicine that upon it being magnified to a certain height then is it, it transcends a person into the metaphysical realm and then they operate within it that's why psychedelics are so dangerous they pierce people into the cosmos in the sense that in the sense that they make people hallucinate they interact with demons check out testimonies of people that have been on psychedelics and uh, psychedelics and what they experience they essentially will let you know that they you know in the absence of being delivered by jesus were tormented taunted by demons during their psychedelic trip uh it's all pharmakia so the high that a person experiences when they are on drugs is similar to what under heaven happens when a person casts a spell there is a manifestation and infestation in that ecosystem of lots of demons and these demons cannot just hang around and respect human beings they tend to indwell human beings especially the witch in question who operates so they get sent out there if at all a spell is cast to do whatever it is that the spell is supposed to do and when the human individual that is being sabotaged by the spell conquers when they survive when they overcome because they're christian or they've got a christian standing in the gap or christ just will not have that happen to them um these entities i would imagine have absolutely no way to roam and so they come back and they torment whoever it is that sent these entities to them uh so if this person has been busy for like 10 years on the same target and these entities have been roaming around roaming around roaming around since they have been unleashed through these psychedelic portals through these pharmakia portals opened by the practitioner they ultimately go back to the practitioner they go back to the uh, sorcerer or the sorceress and they then torment the sorcerer or the sorceress which is why people who practice witchcraft end up so depressed why there's such a high suicide rate among them why they they are so murderous why they end up com transforming altogether personalities they change it's because whatever what entities they send to people especially if they don't work if they don't finish the work that they were supposed to do in people's lives these entities have to come back and finish whatever job the witch tried to do and then they come back and they afflict them if you listen to certain uh, to some other witches testimonies about their experiences in the occult and why they wanted to quit uh, they will let you know that at some point initially when they started with what with, with what they were doing they had a euphoria about ill-gotten gain but it got to a point where they were just perpetually depressed perpetually miserated constantly in a state of paranoia essentially uh, lots and lots of paranormal activity happening around them to a point where they couldn't deal anymore and they wanted out they wanted out those who cried out to christ amen hallelujah the lord then gave them mercy but those who don't cry out to jesus christ find they they i mean i know of this one girl on youtube that just decided to quit witchcraft because it was taunting her but she did not repent give her life to christ i don't know how that's working out for her um she told herself that she's cleaning her energies around and whatnot i don't know perhaps the common grace of god is in operation but the only people that are truly delivered from being pursued for the rest of their days by these things are christians those who give their lives to jesus christ because he is the only one who can conquer these forces do you understand what i'm saying yeah so when therefore you are constantly barraging somebody with you know a, a slew of insults with witchcraft when you just keep on sending them and darting them unbeknownst to yourself what you're actually achieving in the metaphysical or the cosmic realm you are like one who is like taking a line of cocaine you are shooting up some kind of a drug some kind of a hallucinogen or a methamphetamine i don't know and this thing is you know giving you a high initially you gain a euphoria but then you get addicted to this particular substance this narcotic and then you end up given that you are now addicted needing more and more doses of it and upon requiring more and more doses of it unbeknownst to yourself that you're actually literally taking in way more than your body can handle you then end up ODing you overdose so just like a typical drug overdose like a heroin overdose a morphine overdose a fentanyl overdose so too is excessive practicing of occult magic trying to force one particular agenda along with it 
gaining absolutely no traction for you, so too does it also achieve an overdose. And the Lord showed me that this guy is going to cease to exist, leave the earth, essentially die from a drug overdose. And that I was able to properly interpret it about to understand that it's not an actual drug overdose where he's snuffing an actual line of cocaine or shooting up. Maybe he is doing that. I don't know. Because a lot of times people very severely involved in the occult deal with the demonic tormentedness that they are... Um, you know inebriated by with drugs they cope with actual um substances but i'm already sure if this guy is doing substances frankly i don't really care about what's going on with his life he is just a menace that i can't wait to get out of my hair he's like a tick he is something that is in dire need of a very hard knock shampoo he is like a rabid dog or a rabid human being who's just like ticking time bomb and any minute now he's going to explode i can't stand him however every so often my heartstrings are pulled for him and i have compassion so i stand in the gap i pray for him i ask the lord to spare his life uh type establishment thing but my prayers can only go so far in the sense that you can only t you can take a horse to the water but you can't make a drink there are many a christian that have stood in the gap and prayed for their lost loved ones who perished anyway darkened who perished anyway lost because they were just rebellious they were recalcitrant and frankly the gospel is, is is an individual responsibility to be responded to by human beings and while we can stand in the gap for family members at the end of the day they're the ones that have got to make the decision for jesus so we can nudge them along and clear the path for them by standing in the gap and even fasting. But if they don't want to drink, that is a horsey that frankly is happy with dehydration. And so there's nothing I can do for you. We will be bereaved. We will be bereft. We will be mournful, scorned by the prospect of you burning in hellfire at your funeral. However, we tried. We tried. And the Lord is going to wipe away those tears from our eyes one day in eternity where we can't stop thinking about our loved ones weeping and gnashing in their teeth in eternity for they were close to the light and so therefore are beaten with many blows given that they ignore the gospel that we gave them right all we can do is try for people but if they don't want to drink they don't want to drink they don't want to drink and this dude is like a total horse that is at the uh, uh, well drinking uh sorry refusing to drink because he thoroughly imagines that um there is some prosperity to what it is that he has done because he's just he's looking at my life he is looking at what appears to be prosperous sorcery and so he's like, maybe I just need to nudge this one more time. And uh, with, in his mind, it's this is a murder-suicide, right? Like, I want nothing to do with him and he's aware of it. He is no longer naive enough to imagine I can ever get into his space. But if I could die first, that would be really great. That would be really great. That's what he's thinking, right? So he will perish from a, a drug overdose absent of repentance. All of my standing in the gap is not really going to do much for him if he has absolutely no intention at all um, of responding to the Holy Spirit's yearnings or charging, chargings for his soul, uh, that which is the hand of help that is being sent out to him in the cosmos by prayer, intercession and the like. If it does not work, it does not work, it does not work. You cannot force a person to grab a rope when they are about to plunge down a mountain so that they can rescue themselves. So if he wants to plunge to his demise, then let him go. The Lord has made it clear that this human being is about to perish in the worst way from the very gallows that he set out for me to hang at he will be the one to swing like a pendulum on them he will perish in the very same manner that he attempted to make me perish by suicide he will end his own life one time i dreamt about him basically unleashing a bullet in his brain and um last night i was told that he will be found hanging in his place so forms of suicide are basically being communicated to me are, are about to ensue in this american man's life but this whole like chat session this discussion that i'm having right now this very serious talk that i'm having right now is not even so much to highlight the infidelity against the son of man by this like charlatan of a disposable no-brainer menace is he dennis man in the united states of america this menace to society that is frankly unquenchable in all of his reprobateness there is appears it appears absolutely nothing that can be done uh for this guy he will perish and i won't even know that he's died i will just feel a sense of relief now that he has like entered into the abyss should that happen the issue right now is the black community i am having this discussion to pretty much rebuke and get at call out the incredible insidious and incendiary general tactless disposition of black people black folk 
you are in dire need of being rebuked in the worst way. You are entitled, unfortunately, precisely because of your historical sufferings, your historical challenges with being racistly mistreated by the general population of the earth has made you imagine that you are untouchable because you think your name is MC Hammer. Black people, you are ridiculous in the worst way. Thanks to your entitlement, you have got this like violence with reverse racism where nobody can call you out on clear character flaws, moral turpitudes that you glide these streets walking in. You are entitled to having them not get called out um, precisely because the moment anybody raises it, they are either if they have got my skin color and Uncle Tom or if they don't have my skin color racist. No one can call you out for anything when you are clearly barbaric. I will apply this very blanketly to the general population of black people because I have been suffering for a cool decade, an entire decade. That is one and then a zero next to it. In the presence, in the midst of black folk, at the horror and shock of pretty much everybody else on the left and on the right of me that is not black. Everybody else wags their head and concerns themselves with why or why. There is this big fat chunky question mark hovering around above the heads of everybody else that is not black as to but why has this woman been left bereft and abandoned in so a capacity as this when she is suffering? Where is her mother? Where is her father? Where is her sister? Where is her brother? Where under heaven are all of her people? Where are they? When under heaven I am anticipated to be rescued by white folk or Indian folk or any other race but black, on that day you have guaranteed yourself a nice little stamp of approval of being just barbaric. You are like Neanderthals, black people. I cannot say this enough. You adore to lament and grunt and chant on the spot, huffing and puffing and blowing the house down like the big bad wolf that you are, since you are indeed just that, a wolf in sheep's clothing, lamenting about how it is that everybody treats you like rubbish and then you feel entitled to everybody pampering you despite you having just a plethora of moral character flaws, just a violence of degradation of one's character. Your personality leaves a lot to be desired, black people. And yet you are sitting where you are sitting, expecting everybody to congratulate you because you've got this skin tone. I frankly feel ashamed to belong to you. Some days I even wish I wasn't born black. No, not because I'm an Uncle Tom, but because frankly, every human being here on earth as they are born, given the image of God, deserves love. They have got to be adored they have got to be raised, reared in the admonition of the Lord that they might inherit eternal life one day. But you put so many black people as black people in a position to hate God because of how much their lives suck that they then end up rejecting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, albeit you guys calling yourselves all Christian and stuff. How you adore to attend churches and be all theatrical at these churches while ignoring your fellow man as they suffer like no man's business. How also you adore to be theatrical, bouncing up and down on the spot, gyrating, even rolling in the mud at people's funerals when they perish, when their deaths could have been avoided if at all you had, I don't know, intervened. You have got a callousing in your core to a point where your children, your sons and your daughters are being massacred by stray bullets hailing from entire Lone Ranger countries far away in another continent from you. And they're getting massacred, murdered, butchered by psychopaths on the internet while you merely gaze on this random buffoon in the United States of America, black people, allow me to describe to you just the general issue with this man. He pursued me trying to come into the life of a woman that frankly was not in his league because he was one of those randos that the United States of America and all of its moral turpitude decided to set free. He's a man, he lives in California. They decided to set him free from prison because the jails were full during coronavirus. Everybody knows how it is that California is this like um, leftist state that is run by a whole bunch of demons that claim to be human beings. And so there is no order. There is no law. People walk in and out in California, out of stores with goods and stuff, and nobody can do anything. People get rebuked for trying to stop a robbery because apparently, allegedly, you could get hurt. And it is a law that this particular crime is not really a crime or even a misdemeanor. Our prisons are too full, frankly, at this particular moment, so let them go. Who, however, are the majority of random thieves in these stores, in these Walmarts that are closing 
in the neighborhood Sabatobanso, black people's neighborhoods. It's black people. It's black people. Black people are the ones that keep on ransacking chaotically Walmarts and all different kinds of other grocery stores because there are bylaws that have been changed or whatever is going on there in California. This random buffoon in the United States of America was set free during coronavirus lockdowns and it was becoming a little dangerous for prisoners to be in prison given that the disease was busy spreading all over the show and people were dropping like but like like flies that's what's good so he was among the people that was placed on parole set free to go and fly like a bird because he thought he was Nelly Furtado and then he found an innocent woman on the internet in that season of having been released he would have spent a lot more time in prison maybe even the rest of these days but they let him go they let this guy go he went to prison for wait for it attempted murder which according to these laws in California is not even a crime you guys know that right like attempted murder petty theft or whatever such things have been regarded as non-crimes and you're gonna get like these random criminals to roam these streets so if you have attempted to murder somebody i feel as if though you did not quite do it because the dude got to hospital on time you are a murderer just one that did not quite get the job done and finished so you should still be in prison that's what's good for life maybe even a death sentence if your state permits it but this dude is roaming these streets as the criminal that he is that never ever repented all gave his life to Jesus but because I am a naive little Christian that imagines that if the Lord has set a man free he is free indeed from all of his former crimes I imagined that this human individual was one that God gave amnesty I imagined that this human individual was one that God gave a second chance because hey you are gonna spend the rest of your life in prison but guess what happened corona virus now you better get your act together I imagine since the Lord is the Lord of the second chance the third the fourth and the fifth chance I imagine that since God does that for people that this dude would be really grateful for the Lord having done this in him and so therefore actually do a whole haul on his life. I unfortunately, however, was found in this position by this menace in the United States of America during a time in my life when I wasn't thinking straight because persecution does that to a person. When you're suffering like no man's business, sometimes you allow yourself to accommodate some of the worst things coming at you. Flailing red flags were all over the show with this random menace from the United States of America. I, however, ignored them all because, hey, you know what? He took care of me during a time when everybody else was ignoring me who is everybody else in this question black people i am a black woman i was raised by black people in a predominantly black country in a black continent i am african i am south african to be exact so I'm not out here in these streets expecting anybody else to grab a, a little bit of a rope and throw it at me to rescue me or hurl me out of this other than by black people. I've only ever grown up amidst black people. I grew up in the 80s and 90s. That's what you must understand. I was born in 1984. So when integration or di diversification in the schools was starting to happen, that's when I went to a, a, a multi-mixed school, a multi-racial uh, school. That's what's good, right? So we were yet to get used to racial diversity. It was the very beginning of the end of apartheid. So black girls stayed friends with black girls. Black boys stayed friends with black boys. We kept our silos. The Indians hung out together. The coloreds hung out together, even though we were in the same school. And the whites hung out together. By the amazing grace of God, grace of God, that has started to change in these last couple of years. Kids are now integrating with each other to a point where you can see a crew of girlfriends where one is Indian, one is white, one is colored, and it's like all the same thing. Don't nobody care. That's what's good. But when I was starting out in high school and primary school, everybody was still pretty much in their silos because everybody did not trust everybody. Group Areas Act was still very much reverberating in the school system in the sense that we were all siloed still, meaning that I grew up with literally just black friends. I only started making white friends when I was in corporate South Africa. I didn't even hang out with white kids when I was in university. I didn't hang out with Indian kids. I only started to mix with people later on in life, meaning that those who would have feelings of endearment towards me, having lingered through these streets with me, all throughout my life would be black people. Those who would care very deeply, deeply enough to ask, so where's Karabo? It's black people. I did not gather for myself enough Indians. I did not gather for myself enough white people to care enough for me to be like, but this is a travesty and an abomination. All I have to care for me are the silos within which I was hanging out thanks to my racially segregated country that at the tail end of it, I was growing up then in that ecosystem. Black people. Black people were the are still presently the only people that are in any position to care or at least ought care more for me 
than I am currently cared for. Nobody else is coming for me. Ain't no white man coming for me. Ain't no white lady going to care enough for me to help me out. Ain't no Indian chick or even a Puerto Rican. Nobody, nobody, no matter their heartstrings, how matter, no matter how compassionate they may feel, is actually going to make any different, any decision at all to hurl me out from these murky waters that I am in because nobody has got enough of a history with me to care enough that I should not breathe my last in this obscurity. So given that all that I have are black people, I am essentially on this day literally violently and quite vehemently screwed. I am screwed because you have made yourselves these blasé, nonchalant, witchcraft-loving, absolutely meaningless, worthless, feckless, adoring of sabotaging buffoons that feel entitled to being respected by everybody because you have a history with racism. Because you have a history with everybody treating you like you ain't jack. Because everybody shoots you dead in the street. Everybody got gender-based violence against you. Everybody does everybody that shut up. You're in Africa. This is Africa. We don't have police brutality the way that it is so incredibly stark in the United States of America. So what reason or excuse do you have Africans in your Africa, out here in these streets, in your wildlife, your safari? What under heaven excuse do you have for mistreating your fellow man? I can almost understand why that bereft, rando, darkened soul in the US is the way that he is. Because America was predominantly white at some point, And it really did wreak quite a big chunk of havoc in black people's lives. And to this day, they're still struggling with racism. But this, this, this is Africa. This is Africa. We do not have random perpetual cases of police brutality slapping the living daylights out of black people. I mean, recently there was actually a case in the media by of some VIP squad, like bodyguards of like some government member, some politician beating up an innocent dude on the highway. But that VIP squad was black and so too was that dude. And so too was, uh, what was the dude that was getting beaten up? And so too was the protectee. The, the government official that was being protected was also black. There is nobody in South Africa that can turn around and be like, the police yeah, beat me up because I'm black. No, you will not get away. Not in South Africa with police brutality. If anything, white people up in this monster kind of tiptoe around us because we are literally in our numbers. There are more of us than there are of them. They are careful with their words. They bounce around them. They smooth talk us so that we don't, you know, break out into black thing. Whatever is it that is our black thing that we do and we get all upset, they, they are careful with us in a way that I would imagine white folk in the US aren't quite as careful with black folk because, you know, there's like an issue with racism or whatever there. No, no, not here. Not here. People are careful. We do have every so often there was this like random white female a couple of years ago by the name of Penny Sparrow who play, who, who typed on Facebook, uploaded a post on uh, Facebook complaining about how black people basically decimated the glory and the beauty of Durban uh, Beach by littering a whole bunch on it and uh, trended in that a comment of hers in that post of hers how it is that black people just can't keep any place clean the whole of south africa was vomiting hydrochloric acid on her from all different angles indian black fellow white people and they were like you don't get to do that another one rocked up by the name of vicky momberg she was roaming around having been arrested by the police for some misdemeanor thing she was doing while driving and there was a black popo and a colored popo helping basically trying to arrest her or deal with with the case in, in question uh, as she was driving fast or whatever was speeding and she was recorded on tape essentially saying i don't want to be dealing with a black police officer i only want to deal with a colored or a white don't touch me black police officer again she trended like no man's business and even her own mother came out and said no i did not raise my vicky to be that way i did not raise my vicky to be that way that's what happens in south africa when these odd rare occurrences of random blurtings out of racist sentiment come out of people's noses Mm, mm. That's what happens in South Africa. So the isolated cases of white people acting a, a random fool are so few and far between that they're not worthy of being highlighted or heralded in our statistics as like a general issue. So given that we are a pampered conglomerate in Africa as Africans, we struggle very little with xenophobia since we are in our own turf, on our own turf. We're on our own continent. That is what is good. So what then is the excuse, you African black? You black person in Africa, what is your excuse then for treating 
your fellow men like they in jack for ransacking your own neighborhoods with violence what is the real reason behind why you won't take care of durban beach because to a certain extent i get where penny sparrow was coming from what is your reason when you're in africa what what is your reason when you're in africa exactly you don't have a, a valid or sound enough excuse you are saboteurs and on top of that my oh my how you adore to schnoff yourself some lines of occult cocaine you absolutely adore are uh, beside yourself with with admiration for sorcery and with the sorcery no you don't come up against the, the the muhammad indian guy you don't come up against carly the colored girl you don't come up against samantha the white chick you are not trying to come up against i don't know lee the chinese oki you're proper coming up against Garabo. You bewitch each other to a point where you will even manufacture from your creative orifices music to highlight this as an issue in the black community and yet not try to fix it. MT is a, an A-list rapper in this country that came up with a song called something along the lines of What that means is a black person does not want to see a black person rise a black person doesn't want to see a black person go ahead. Mm. MT only ever sang about that, but to do anything about it now. Black people, forget about it. We only sing about that which is an observation we are making about our own moral turpitude, but do anything about it. Hollow, naught, ash. Absolutely no intervention, yet you feel entitled to support, respect, and regard. It is no wonder South Africa is the most unequal country in the world. It is no wonder why people keep to their silos and why they keep big, fat, chunky guns shooting us on sight when, under heaven, we trespass in their backyards, even though we were just trying to get our soccer balls it is no wonder everybody is so scared of us it is no wonder indians are moving to australia and what is this place called um canada because here it is that you went and looted all of kzn moving them out of their own neighborhood because now they cannot feel safe in their environments anymore during the season of persecution where i've been suffering i used to have my own apartment before i lost everything before i ran dry before my finances basically were depleted and in this uh, apartment where i was living I was trying to move because I had issues with the landlord where I was staying at first precisely because he had observed how badly my fellow black people are treating me so he had no incentive to treat me better. He was a white man from Germany, Nochal, with a historical link in his bloodline to Hitler for crying out loud from what the Lord showed me. So here it is that I'm being racistly treated by a man who's still holding on to apartheid South Africa and he's not even from South Africa, he is German. So frankly, you're stepping on the wrong turf toes because this is my continent did this so i had to leave that landlord okay because he was wreaking havoc in my life thanks to the observation of mistreatment by my own people i then met a real estate agent in trying to get another apartment in the same complex because i really loved that complex and he was indian and when i explained to him that i'm just looking for a six month lease because frankly that's all i can afford for now he was like why not just move back home with your mother or whatever you know while you get your life together while you get a job while you ever etc i was like because i can't afford to move back at home with my mom because things are just not working out there with uh us and this gentleman went on to be like do you mind if i ask you a personal question i hope not to offend you i was like hit me he then went on right ahead to do just that hit me and you know what he asked me he was like if your mother passed away would you cry I looked at him and I was like, yes, of course, why wouldn't I? I love my mother. I would be beside myself with grief if she were to perish. And she's like, no, I'm just asking because, you know, I sort of kind of noticed that black people don't really look out for each other. And I was like, you know what? I am not offended. At that stage, I was already suffering quite uh, like uh, grievously, egregiously had black people come at me like with flying kicks and everything. So I was already in agreement with the fact that my people are frankly unacceptable. They don't make sense. What they're doing out here in these streets is menacing, and why nobody is stopping it is be like a big like I, 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 it's beyond me. I don't get it. I do not understand. I was like, no, I get where you're coming from. Black people do have an issue with uh, with love, with respect for each other, and I cannot, for the life of me, explain why they are like that within the middle income to the upper middle income to the wealthy class while i can see why the bereft with poverty black folk in the country might struggle to love each other because when you're already suffering quite a lot you can't focus on your fellow man because you know your life already sucks on its own so it's every man for himself but when you come from a middle income family when you come from a upper middle income family when you come from a wealthy family and you're the only one that's poverty stricken you're the only one that can't get a job you're the only one that nepotism is not quite applicable to you're the only one amidst them that is eating like my 
while everybody else is having champagne and caviar no on that day i'm sorry you belong to a squadron of zombies as opposed to a family and that's what's going on in the black community i might give amnesty to the poor because they're already going through too much for them to to, to pay too much attention to their next man because they call each one of them individually does not know where their next meal is coming from but this war that i am at war with I'm at war with the war because the war is a war within the black community. It's like infighting. It's like divide and conquer. It's like just this disgusting, menacing thing. It's disgusting. It's ugly. Okay. It is happening in an echelon or social class of human beings that ought not be this defeatist against one another because they're not poor. I am poor today. However, I was not born into a socioeconomic class group that is regarded as poor. I have been middle income ever since I could remember. I do not remember growing up in a house that had no electricity or running water or flushing toilet. I don't remember Nike Sabidisa a long drop go Rustenberg for a bathroom or even having to bath outside Moskotolong in a dish. No, there's always been a bathtub there's always been well not wealth middle class my family all the way from as far back as my grandmother never mind my mom my uncles essentially that generation no i am speaking as far back as my granddad and my grandmom we have been middle income we were among the first children as soon as the laws allowed for black kids to attend white schools or schools where there were previously um only for a particular racial group thanks to group areas act in apartheid uh, we, my family's children, basically, were among the first kids in my neighborhood to attend white schools. We are among the first. As soon as the laws were repealed that blocked black kids from attending white schools, we were out in these streets attending classes with white kids because my family could afford to. My grandfather was a construction was into construction, he built houses and so he was able to afford lots of things that black people in the community couldn't. He built other people's houses in my neighborhood. He had money. My grandmother ran a little business at home. My mom and her siblings, etc., were the first among their group of uh, like peers to also study at higher learning institutions. So get degrees and stuff like that so that they don't have to end up scanning groceries at the local pick and pay for a career in the future. My mother today is an HR executive because she got a degree. My dad is a was, he's late now, a solicitor, an entire lawyer. Do you understand what I'm saying? At some point he was even lecturing the way he's so intelligent at Wits University. It is no wonder I am so smart. I inherited my father's genes and my mother's genes. I am gifted that way because I come from a gifted family of academics. And yet here it is that a woman that comes from a family like that, my sister, my sister, let me just put this out there. My older sister not only got a scholarship to study in Italy when she was a teenager, she went on right ahead to do university in the United States of America. And then she worked there briefly, worked also in Nigeria and then worked in South Africa. And then when she was working in South Africa, she applied to do her master's degree at Harvard and she got accepted. So my older sister has a master's degree from Harvard University in the United States of America. These are the statistics of my family. Yeah. We have a Harvard graduate in my family. And yet I am gathering dust at the back of my mother's house in these living conditions, going absolutely nowhere, doing nothing. This family of mine, if it was not for my dad's alcoholism, would have been wealthy. My father, his connections, the judges of this country, I told you he was a solicitor. Mm. The judges of this country, of the Supreme Court and the Constitutional Court. So essentially the highest courts of the land. He knows them by name, like chest bumping. They used to drink beer on campus together back in the day. The politicians that run this country know my dad by name by name so if my father had not squandered his life on alcohol i would be a very wealthy young woman today but you know he did that so we were not able to come up uh, properly in that regard however my mom did pretty well for herself and so we were able to live relatively decently mm. i live in a shack at the back of my mother's house well listen to these statistics okay we have got 24 hour internet we also have got solar panels in a country that's constantly cutting electricity so that's the socioeconomic condition or position of my family in this country of ours solar panels are a luxury most people frankly don't have them the power cut crisis is damning to everybody but one or two people in the neighborhood and we just so happen to be among them that's my family that is what my family has and yet i'm gathering dust to the back of my mom's house going no way literally absolutely nothing at all is availing for me i am one of the most intelligent people in my 
Never mind family, but just general ecosystem of anybody I've ever known in my life. I've always been known for being gifted. I've always been known for being intelligent. I've always been known for being smart. I've always been known for being hardworking. Basically, statistics that I am currently presenting before you now that are not deniable. They cannot be denied by anybody at all that has got any level of honesty in them. Yet, despite that ad admission of what I am and that fact being a thing about me, I am being spoken of by my ecosystem as a lazy woman one who has decimated destroyed her own life lacks responsibility can't keep a job are you serious i flew i skyrocketed i frankly streaked up like like i don't know guys i, I streaked i did not walk or even climb i streaked up the corporate ladder because i was not only responsible but i was just hella intelligent i was gifted i had a paradigm shifting mind i had a different way of thinking and it caused my bosses to be bosses to be very very um what is the word that i am looking for impressed enough with me to give me promotions even before i got my degree even before i got my degree so i, I grew really quickly up the corporate ladder but you see a person like that in the black community in africa that is witchcraft central no i'm sorry you don't get to do it when you have got just a plethora of gifts there's nothing you can't do you can sing you can dance you can play the cello you can play the guitar you can like goodness you speak while you're an orator you blah, 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 blah. Yeah, stop stop yeah, so the, the, the number one cause of cessation of growth in the black community of people is fellow black people. They will look at you and say, I'm sorry, you don't get to have it all. So now South Africa is this like random fluffy little economy that has got these mediocre randos working all over the show because they know how to do witchcraft. And everybody that is actually really good at what they do, they're either gathering dust at the backs of their mother's houses or they are in jobs that don't make sense for them or they have died because they got killed by jealous freaks on the internet. That's what's good. So here it is that an American who is a criminal grabs a little bit of a microscope or perhaps like a magnifying glass or whatever and scans the earth since the internet has made it possible for people to just scan the planet to find random bargains on the internet and then he finds this like incredible gem in africa that's disregarded by everybody in her life She's beautiful. She is intelligent. She is basically bordering on being a virgin. She's chaste. She is a daughter of God. My goodness, I am twice divorced. I come from prison. Frankly, I wasn't even supposed to be released. And on top of that, I got HIV. What I'm going to do is give this woman just a couple of dollars. And then I'm going to reel her into my space. Because look, nobody else loves her. So now Africans are entering into a diaspora where they're being moved to America, Europe, or some other distant land by bargain hunters on the internet that are fresh out of prison. And so for those reasons, African women with all of their rare raw glory are being snatched up by some of the most wicked man men overseas because Africans are too busy focusing, concentrating, staring longingly and lovingly, endearingly, almost as though it's a doting bride on her wedding day by a groom into sorcery so because they keep on looking deep down into cauldrons they can't even recognize when their own daughters are being murdered by strangers in foreign lands that have lost their moral virtue foreign lands that have lost their girth the thing that makes them wholesome the thing that was the once the flag that they flailed proudly in the sky to say this is me i am an american now that they are losing their glory as a country some of their most assorted criminals are literally coming here with fishing rods to africa to grab some of the most rarest most exotic gems that are untainted however greatly disrespected and unloved and that is because of the fact that black people and their disease you proper like literally apartheid ends okay so we're out of the woods when it comes to like racial segregation whatever it is that the colonizer done did to us we are now free and instead of standing with each other ubuntu bay no that doesn't even make sense at all you then literally perpetuate linger apartheid even without the white man still giving you grief so the white man is like go live it's your country fine rainbow nation now we no longer are oppressing you and then you stay in the silos that that you already had in the group areas act now this time around instead of the group areas act or the racial segregation of apartheid being between blacks and whites and indians and coloreds maybe even the chinese or the asians now the segregation is between the haves and have nots because black people are busy hoarding funds finances opportunity and futures from fellow black people that nobody here can actually really truly grow there is no leg room for any black person to truly overcome racial oppression from the past so you are no longer in any position to blame mr kutsia at this point mr van der i'm sorry he does not have anything to do with it anymore no no the no longer has anything to do with it anymore when the passed away so many black people were like yeah good really 
friends you better die r.i.p i'm sorry lack of forgiveness much you're stupid you're dumb why because the dude repented back then he said i'm sorry back then but then now that you are the one that is destroying yourselves the country is still very severely racially segregated the money is still very much in white people's hands and you are blaming white people i'm sorry they had to stand back employment equity was like you're gonna stand back you're gonna give black people opportunities you're gonna give indian people opportunities you're gonna give colored people opportunities and black folk were like y'all thank you for our affirmative action what we're gonna do now is make sure that only five percent of the black community gets any of the pie of the like the recompense from racial oppression but you are still blaming Christine Jacobs. You are still blaming uh, good luck, uh, Esmeralda van der Merwe. You are still uh, blaming uh, Joe Smith. You are probably still trying to make it look as if though the white folk or their sons and daughters are still responsible for why it is that there's so much segregation between black people and everybody else. Except Indian folk will give you a run for your money, black people, you who claim for the life of you that white folk are still sitting on your cash, sitting on your farmland, you busy listening to EAFF, -A -A Julius Malema doesn't even like white people. There is no place or ought not be any place or position for any leader to take the throngs in this country, the baton, and run well into the future, taking leadership away from the ANC if he does not like a, a particular racial demographic in the country. He is literally blatantly on national television saying that he will sing kill the boar any minute now if he wants to. What the heck? Those of you who don't understand what that is. So back in the day, there was this guy that passed away by the name of Chris Honey during at the very height of racial oppression in South Africa. Apartheid was still rearing its ugly head and everything with horns and fangs bleeding, dripping the blood of black people, Indian people, and colored people. That's what's good. And so because this angry struggle, uh, rev, 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 the struggle activist by the name of Chris Honey was all upset, there was a song that he sang that said, kill the boer, ah, the farmer, ah, ah, kill the boer, ah, the farmer, ah, ah. So basically a boer is the Afrikaans term for a white male or a white farmer from back in the day. Uh, though the term boot in and of itself is not derogatory in the sense that a lot of white males still regard themselves very proudly so as a boots. They yell as the Buddha mach, they are the Buddha mach, so it's not a racist slur at all. But when you say kill the boer, kill the farmer, you are basically saying kill a particular segment of human beings because of whatever it is that might be a rhetoric. At the time when Chris Honey was singing that kill the boer, ah, the farmer, ah, ah, he was saying that because the boer and the farmer was busy killing black people because of racial oppression because of apartheid back in the day but it is no longer acceptable for that song at all it should be scrapped from our like tongues completely for anybody to sing that song today the angry black people that were being afflicted by oppressive systematic oppression in the days of apartheid got to sing that chris honey got to sing that kill the boer kill the farmer because the boer and the farmer was coming to soweto and shooting down mother's sons and stuff so back then, it was an acceptable song because we were struggling and we were striving to overcome oppression by the white elite. You don't get to rock up in 2023. As a dude that didn't even get to experience apartheid, Julius Malema was born in 1983. He's my age for crying out loud. So, nah, go on, ask Trevor Noah if you're sitting in the United States of America. We only experienced the tail end of apartheid. And even then, it wasn't even that bad. The people who really felt it were the ones who were born in the 70s, perhaps even 60s. Maratina, 80s babies. Frankly, Sipunyirabampeta, we dodged some bullets. We dodged bullets because we were still toddlers when apartheid was coming to a blistering end. So Julius Malema has absolutely no recollection or memory at all or really self, really suffering under apartheid. So, I mean, unless, uh, unless of course, Kimang Cyril Ramaphosa himself well, was still in his heart trying to say, kill the boy, kill the farmer because he's got PTSD and he's struggling with forgiveness. I can see why Cyril Ramaphosa would want to sing that. I can see why Jacob Zuma would want to sing that or even Tabombeki, but this like little baby called Julius Malema. For him to harbor that level of hatred against somebody or a group of people that he didn't even get to really truly feel the pain of their oppression on him. What is he doing? And he then goes on right ahead to get, uh, what is this, uh, a title in the news. A, a news headline. A news headline that says, if I want to sing Kill the Boa any day, I get to do that. But he wants to become the next president of South Africa. So it's another, what, what, some kind of a form of a re reverse racism 
It's like the woke mob in America that expects black people to just get away with every last ounce of murder out here in these streets without anybody raising it as a concern. And the moment you raise it as a concern, everybody gets called racist. Everybody gets called intolerant. Everybody gets called anti-diverse. I'm sorry, no, you don't get to come up with random rubbish and cause an, an entire group of human beings that are occupying your country, living there as citizens, to live uncomfortably because they just so happen to have ancestors that used to beat the living daylights out of your ancestors. We are having a woke mentality slapping South Africa where one of our opposition leaders to the ANC is probably trying to win himself a crowd of racist black people priding themselves in the fact that they can any day now get to sing kill the boo kill the farmer are you serious there is no room in this country for any president at all that hates any single demographic be it white black purple or pink there is no room for that but julius malema that is how he is rallying that is how he is campaigning for his presidency by basically saying i'm going to make sure white people can don't have a position to sit in this country the white people of which you are blaming like no man's business for the racial inequality in this country, the fact that white money is still pretty much the money of South Africa, the fact that there is still so much of a, uh, what do you want, like income disparity between black folk and white folk, you are still blaming white people? I would probably agree with you in blaming white people if white people were the only ones that still have the money in 2023. But we have seen how that income has been redistributed to the Indians, don't come lie. We have seen how that income has been redistributed to the small little percentage of Asians, like Chinese, that are in the country. But go and engage their the big fat chunky China mats. Go Hill Fox. Their big fat chunky China mats. Go East Gate. Their big fat, yeah, no. The Chinese have got a whole nicely, a nice chunk of the South African economy. The Indians have got a big fat chunk of the South African economy. The colors a lot more than what is South Africa that that, Af that blacks have. There's a difference between black and colored in South Africa, even though in other countries it's the exact same thing. We are still struggling and are impoverished because we did it. We did it to ourselves. We did it to our black people, did this to themselves because of corruption. Your black government that rocked up and stole all the money, ate away at all the pieces of the pie that they could have potentially distributed among their own people. They kept it for themselves. Look at me, I'm a young, uh, I'm a millennial that grew up just after apartheid ended. I should have had the best opportunities thrown at me because I was among the first recipients of employment equity laws of this country. I ought to have been, I mean, goodness gracious, I was supposedly allegedly received given unfair favor undue favor just by mere virtue of me being one a woman to a black woman a kid growing up in an era where now they are going to redistribute that which white people took away from us i was one of the first recipients recipient kids of that nature and indeed in the very beginning of my career i i enjoyed i, I literally gained all the glory of the benefits of uh, employment equity Affirmative action and all of these BEE laws all over the show. Black economic empowerment laws all over the show. I benefited in the worst way. I benefited. I got given uh, what, what was this advantages because of the fact that I just so happened to have been born previously disadvantaged. And then what came up against me? What was the thunder strike? Hmm? What was the lightning strike on my general head? What was that? Black people. Black folk in corporate South Africa. Black folk in our universities. Black people are the ones that were like, I'm sorry. I'm going to go and grab if at all we were given 30% to take out of this pie. As previously disadvantaged, mind you. In, in, in the days of apartheid, there was like a, a sliding scale of who gets the better treatment versus the next. So black people were the worst treated. White, uh, white people were the best treated. Black, the worst treated. And in between, there were Indians um, and Khalids. Asian, uh, the Chinese of this country fought for their position or their place because they also claimed that they were previously disadvantaged so they eventually incorporated them but initially when ee rocked up in this country they were only catering to indians colors and blacks and because the historical laws of apartheid gave more favor more services etc based on your skin tone so colored people had it better than blacks but indians had it better than colors so it was white and then indian and then colored and then black we were at the bottom of the barrel meaning that when they were trying to recalibrate that scale they gave the chunk of bee -E empowerment to black people black people and yet having been given the grandest opportunity to get ourselves re-energized reduced restarted we are falling the farthest behind 
How is that even a thing? I'm sorry, black people. You can blame Wonko Mutulam Kalkwane as much as you want, but you did this to yourself. Your adoration of witchcraft, your self-affliction. You know, the loss of my job at MTN was largely because Indians are stuck together and largely the conglomerate of people who broke me, who shattered me and decimated my career were Indians. So they stood by each other. They stood by each other. Our CEO was Indian and he rather chose to take the side of the wrong Indians rather than break away his from his Indian brotherhood oath. That's what the Indian people do for each other, like Nigerians across the world. They serve each other's needs no matter where they find themselves at, but no black people divide and conquer. The Indians saw the, the, the hole in our system and took away all of our opportunities. It's like, you don't want it, fine. Even though the piece of the pie was largest for you because you were the most disadvantaged single demographic in apartheid. Since you don't want it, since you keep cutting each other up, since you keep messing one another up, I'm sorry, be ravenous wolves and dogs against each other, tearing away at each other's skin, do you? But as for me and my fellow Charo, on the left and on the right of me, we're gonna build our empires. So if you look at the market share of Indians in this country in terms of wealth distribution, it is far greater than it was after, uh, at the end of apartheid. They've actually grown. So do have the colors. So do have the Asians with their China marts all over the show. Taking over uh, pretty much the whole earth. With their police station even Kosantan for crying out loud. But black people are poorer than they were even in the days of apartheid. But for like 2% of them. Just a small little conglomerate. And if you look at the black people that are in corporate South Africa. Or the private sector of South Africa in businesses and entrepreneurs. Quality. Quality. The quality is substandard. You would think that South Africans are dumb. South African blacks are stupid. If you go to corporate South Africa, you would think that the, the, the rumors that they spread about us not being intelligent. That's why they made us study Bantu education. You would think that those rumors are true. Because the quality of black of, of the black workforce in South Africa is so lackluster that you would think that black people are actually truly dumb, except no, we're not. In every racial group, there are people who are the, with a lesser intelligence and there are people with a loftier intelligence bordering on being Einsteins. It's a, a normal distribution. People who are very gifted exist in every demographic. God saw it that way. But the most gifted, those who are on the outliers of the normal distribution, so essentially those that are the cream of the crop, the ones who are on the far right of the normal distribution, instead of just hovering around in the center, they're the ones that are being targeted by a uh, targeted by mediocre randos. So Karabo, for instance, case in point, lost her entire career when I was working at MTN because mediocre colleagues kicked me out. I was too good at what I did. I am not boasting. I'm not bragging. Only go, only look at my content on YouTube to understand how I used to be as an employee in corporate South Africa. I grew quickly because I was really good at what I did. I was a program manager within the ICT telecommunications space in a country that is in dire need of such skills as those alongside across the world at large. I could have even been an African diaspora, but I'm unemployed because the mediocre black folk of my country are now today sitting as CEOs, senior managers, general managers. They are not today literally running entire organizations. They're the ones getting tenders from the government, building streets that have got potholes all over the show. They're the ones stealing monies, misappropriating funds, embezzling everybody. They're the ones that are walking in corruption because they've got connections. My ex-boyfriend, eh, to the ANC. Because they've got connections to somebody in the political sphere and on top of it, over and above just their general knack for corruption, there then is the problem with witchcraft. They shoot darts at each other, laser beams in the cosmos, knocking one another down and when one falls that is really gifted and good at what they do my oh my how they act as if though it's not a thing that's going on literally there are polka dot red and yellow painted elephants in the room all across south africa because people are unemployed that have no business being unemployed currently there are so many gifted black youth so many gifted black skilled professionals that have gained actual experience and education that are sitting gathering dust because that is a lerato or a pinky or a man or a rinello or a refilwe that is busy bewitching the living daylights out of her colleague so that she does not get anywhere. And when you look at why why Rinelwe is bewitching Garabo, when you look at that, you will then be able, able sorry, to identify what the root cause is. You will be able to spot it, you will be able to pinpoint it, put a bullseye in it, that's what's good, and it will be clear just based on the observation of the raw talent of Garabo that Rinelwe booted her out using sorcery. And because of the competitive energy amidst black people, when then the travesty that is being committed against Garabo 
happens in front of other black people that are in a position to be like, but no, this is wrong. Karabo is innocent. Karabo did not do ABC. I feel as if though Rinelo is a savage whore. Instead of doing that, they just stand back on some, I Karabo was a little bit of a force to be reckoned with. So they are trying to make the country mediocre. And since South Africa is in Africa, and so the majority of the population is black, it means that the majority of the workforce is a black. However, we are crashing and burning. Why are we crashing and burning? Because our workforce is being run by mediocre folk. There's only so many Indians to go around in South Africa. There's only so many whites to go around in South Africa. There's only so much, so many colors to go around in South Africa. The majority of the population is black because we are in Africa. And yet the, the workforce of the country is mediocre. Why? Is it because black people are not smart? No, it's because the smartest among us are being kicked out. When then that is the case, we know what happens, right? We are only as strong as our weakest link. So the general quality of the country's output of like services has declined over the years. It is no wonder then, therefore, we are grey listed. It is no wonder then, therefore, we are junk status according to ratings agencies. It is no wonder we have got this power cut crisis on a loop that seems to be going nowhere. It, they, like, I don't care how much white folk in this country sitting in their silo can be like, look at how they're destroying themselves and then stand back and do nothing. Bottom line is, it's their country. So they're shooting themselves in the foot by doing nothing about this. The observation they're making as well, they're not able to say anything about it because the moment a white person complains about the way that black people are doing things strangely they then get called racist etc so there's very little room for complaint very little room for complaint meaning that uh, these blacks that are running this uncomfortable african country of ours are literally running us into the ground i do not know how anybody can suffer julius malema much longer why he is not among one of those silly little parties that don't get very far because get love party or soccer party or whatever because the things coming out of his mouth are resonant or the things coming out of the mouths of political activists in the days of apartheid rightly so because they were oppressed but the dude ain't oppressed but he's busy trying to take away white land he's busy t trying to take away white people's hard-earned land work for your own freaking land for crying out loud you better build go buy stellenbosch wine fields and so far as you can bid for the highest price don't try and take them away because they worked for them get your own like this this country's big enough for you to go and buy a plot of land and put a whole bunch of black people on there and say this is now ours it is no wonder there is such a war a war between blacks and whites in this country and then everybody else is busy watching us scratch each other's eyeballs out while there is all of this inequality going on in our nation that's what's good so while i might be embittered at the fact that white people are blasé nonchalant disregarding of my general sorrow i don't blame them for standing back and doing nothing because the moment they start to highlight the fact that black folk but why are you doing this to one of your own you're gonna go call them hitler you're gonna go call them racist and nazi you're gonna go give them some name tags that don't belong to them if at all indian people have got to be trepidatious rock up with the, some consternation before they can ask you a question along the lines of if your mom passed away would you be sad the fact that that's even a thing the fact that people are making these observations about our indiscretions but they can't speak freely because they're scared of being titled stuff that they ain't is why it is that black folk people gender-based violence is a decimating putting six feet under more your women than any other single racial group in the country they don't want to admit statistically that the majority of gender-based violence victims are black because they don't want to make it about race they want to make it about a general national issue but we all know that while the white lady every so often does get massacred by her husband and while the indian lady does every so often get massacred by her boyfriend bottom line is the majority of gbv cases are black because it is our people that are crazy it is our people that are leaving daughters to just literally be at the beck and call of predators even from other countries all the way in the united states of america i've got some predator that was let out of prison for too soon too quickly and now he is able to try and kill me get with you all the way in south africa because he has made a right observation about the cantankerous chaotic crazy state of my nation that's what's good so black folk i'm sorry it appears you have a disease across the earth everybody got an issue with you can't nobody call you out for nothing nobody can speak anything out against you as black folk there are so many conservatives in the united states of america that share my skin color lamenting about the entitlement of black people and they're busy getting called uncle toms well here's one that's rising up out of the bushes now called karabotongwan i hold to that sentiment as well because i have experienced firsthand the defeatism of black people and black folk would never ever have been corrected in this regard if a black person did not highlight this it had to be a black person suffering like this calling them out for what they are because any other racial group would have been called all different kinds of men of derogatory terms like racist or just ignorant or whatever 
I would understand the national condition of separation of monies, funds. I would understand the national condition of inequality. If at all, it generally stayed the same statistically as in the days of apartheid for Indian people and coloreds too. And even the Asians. Heck, they were not even acknowledged by EE laws initially and yet they went and grabbed the market of the country anyway. They grabbed it anyway. So black people, why are you so poor? Why are so many of your people still living in RDP houses? Why are even those RDP houses largely for white, for, for, black, for black folk? Why are so many people living in shacks? Why is it that when, the, that when there is a national disaster, uh, national, what do you call this? A weather disaster, like a weather phenomenon of some sort, like rains, floods. It's always black neighborhoods that are getting flooded. Why is it that there are no robots? I mean, go for old porch, go Soweto. What the heck? Chris Honey Paraguayev Hospital is one of the biggest and baddest hospitals in this country, Grand Shop in Africa. And it is on a road that the government has made sure that it has no robots in certain parts, but rather roundabouts causing so much traffic on a an emergency route to a hospital that is one of the biggest and baddest in Africa. With those kinds of statistics, how are ambulances supposed to maneuver get traffic your old porch? when one there's always load shedding and even when there is no load shedding there is still chock block traffic even on the weekends because they decided to uproot robots and put a roundabout y'all know what i'm talking about if at all you live in soweto you know that's what the black government is doing to black neighborhoods when there is a flood rains torrential rains it's always sweeping away black people's houses and yet strangely all those mountainous houses go sand and they, they uh, erect a lot they are erect a lot it's always the black neighborhoods because they are infrastructurally very poorly built by a black government i can understand the united states of america sub building like building substandard housing in black neighborhoods because you know it's a white country that every so often has a you know one or two black people in it but in south africa where our black government black government is literally messing up with infrastructure in black neighborhoods where's Alan? what's going on it is no wonder nigeria is africa's leading economy and not south africa and very shortly a neighboring countries that are smaller than us are going to take us over because they're growing at a faster rate than us because we keep shooting ourselves in the foot africa and your sorcery south africans and your defeaters in black south africans please no i'm not i'm not going to out in these streets blame any other single demographic it's black people i am a travesty and i am passing away i am dying being killed by a foreigner in another country because he made an observation about the insanity of my country leaving some of the most gorgeous women in their land some of the most beautiful glorious women educated some of the most skilled rare gems of women in their land to just be perused by bargain hunters on the internet even ones that just came out of prison and never really truly gave their lives to jesus so essentially i am a woman facing a grand amount of future abuse from my husband that i allowed to take me because he's got dollars i am a travesty and an abomination in the sight of emmanuel i am an unequal scale in the worst way but those who are worst to be blamed for even the fact that i am being lambasted with death curse after death curse after death curse because some entitled foolish criminal american feels like i i would much rather die i would much rather have you die than you go out there and get your own future because he thinks i'm juliet and he's romeo Mm. the only reason why that little bugger was given any level of bravado was because black people are crazy black people you are saboteurs black people you are insensitive black people you need to snap out your your entitlement to be regarded as people that are you know, perpetually need to be pampered because you you had such a bad time in history it was so hard to be black yeah it was once upon a time and maybe in 1995 maybe even the year 2000 we could still give you mercy when you're acting a fool because you know everybody gotta go through some therapy Everybody gotta go through some therapy before they recover from being crazy. But now it's like, what, a good three decades down the line? I'm sorry, you have no excuse. Three decades. 1994, 2004, 24 Don't come bore me here. Scott, don't bother black people. Whatever rubbish is going on in the country, you have literally destroyed it. You have literally destroyed it. I don't even know why people are not scared to highlight and make it clear, put it in the forefront, literally by it's a bioscope. The fact that ever since the black government took over South Africa, our electrical grid fell apart, our streets fell apart, our buildings are torn and tattered, our workmanship, even in building homes, homes for the mass ex the, the mass influx of non white racial groups into suburbia after apartheid was repealed and so therefore they could not live in previously white only areas even the workmanship of such bro buildings buildings is substandard in comparison 
to the way that they used to build flats in perhaps for, for instance go rosebank if you look at the old flats from the days of apartheid how big they are how spacious and the workmanship the quality how sturdy and strong the foundations are and how things are not just busy falling apart in comparison to these newly built townhouse complexes in suburbia go or go for ways if you look at the workmanship how many snags shortly after the developer hands over the pro the the, the, the the property to be indwelt now by human beings how many snacks they have to be how many times people gotta patch stuff up how many times geezers burst ceiling what is the sliding doors fall on children when i was living at the william baldwin group is responsible for those build for that for those buildings there was this one man who lived in a house with his child and wife and he said that one day his son was opening the sliding door and it fell on him by the grace of God, the young man was alive. He was okay. He was unharmed. The, the kid was unharmed. However, the fact that a brand spanking new property of that nature can have a sliding door falling on a person just because they try to open it, evidences just how substandard, lackluster, low quality the rebuilding of South Africa was ever since the repealing of apartheid. So much corruption has only ever raised up to the surface. So I'm not out here calling apartheid a better regime. It was satanic. It was terrible. It was a horrible ideology that hurt a lot of people. But whatever took it over was like insults to injury. It was like, not the, you know, better the devil you know than the one that you don't know. They probably have made the apartheid regime the better devil they've made it the better devil because whatever it is that inherited south africa is not right and guess what it is it's black people you cry you, lam you lament you moan you groan you march on the spot because you know how to do it and you ask for your country back they give it back to you and then you ransack it you misappropriate funds you embezzle you steal you do this you do that and you make sure that you disinherit and disenfranchise a whole bunch of south africans in the process and so now some of the baddest and the baddest and brightest of your south african blacks are unemployed, gathering dust at the back of their mother's houses, unable to come up for air. And those who did this to South Africa are not the poor. I am properly, thoroughly out here in these streets, not even about to blame the poor. It's the middle class and the upper middle class. The middle class of this country, the middle class blacks of this country, all the way up until the wealthy, have destroyed the nation because they have refused to distribute opportunity to everybody else that was previously disadvantaged and now as black people we are obviously to blame because we are the sore thumb that sticks out that did not grow up is the stunted kid on the school playground that's not quite catching up with, with the fact that one plus one is equal to two because everybody else grew all the other racial groups grew everybody else grew the indians the chinese alongside the colors everybody else grew and the whites of course continued to grow because they had the historical advantage they had the privilege from the past everybody else grew we no longer get to blame white people literally we properly just don't we no longer get to say i was hearing you don't get to say that anymore i recently just met a black woman on the internet who bewitched my prospects of ever being okay again had a dream where i was working at the wimpy because she put me there literally waiting tables with this level of giftedness what is she doing gathering dust in corporate south africa why because she's mediocre however she's unemployed while somebody way more genius than her is sitting gathering dust and her jealousy made her decimate me black people for you right there making me like one who's got a chunky gaping yawning gap in my cv it is can yonic to a point where i appear rusted and without skills ever since the last time i worked so no one will even give me an interview anymore because black people make sure that i can never ever be okay again but the very same mediocre randos are living in mansions in houghton they're living in mansions in morningside santon they're living it up they're going on trips to spain every second year they can afford to take two year sabbaticals the way that they've got such lofty salaries and yet the most hard-working most intelligent gifted and therefore beneficial to the south african economy people are gathering dust at the backs of their mother's houses literally struggling to come up for air being murdered by some psychopath in america that think that she is juliet while he is romeo so i don't blame that pharmacia psychopath in the u.s for giving me headaches and a nosebleed because why under heaven would you upon picking up a rare gem a diamond or in the rough on the floor as a scrub as an unwholesome being as a poverty stricken no-brainer, as a peasant, why under heaven would you not want to grab a queen that's been cast out of her own castle? Why would you not want to go and take and marry her real fast? Why wouldn't you? I don't blame that psychopath from America. I blame America for basically losing their wits in letting prisoners go that ought to have stayed in prison. 
But more than that, I really don't blame that guy because all he did was that which opportunists do. You know that uh, metal detector that you uh, put on the floor at the beach to see if at all there are there, there's no precious metals on the floor that fell, like people maybe having dropped gold or something. Mm, that's what this guy was. He came to the shores of Africa and was hoping to hear a metal detector. And instead of finding a two rand coin, the little Randall literally found gold, silver, copper, all different kinds of precious stones. And he was like, I'm sorry, I'm going home with this. And so now he, he literally cannot let go. He I'm um, something that he grasped that slipped out of his hands because they were greasy. And as valuable, high value as I am, he is probably telling himself that uh, I will never, ever uh, literally survive the day that this woman marries another man because I picked her up first. I found her first. Literally, I am a gem from South Africa that's some outlier living in the dregs of society, American that has been spat out by even his own country imagines first come first served he looks at me and he's like i found it first me and so now he's trying to kill me and if i died if i were to perish from this incendiary behavior on the part of my own people guess what they're gonna do oh how typical black people how you love to jump into caskets as they're being lowered at funerals they would cry moan groan and even make some stupid speeches at my memorial service about how caramba was this how caramba was that when they would have participated in the mutiny against my life and having put me in harm's way so that a monster would imagine my suicide a feasible outcome since he thinks i am juliet and he is romeo or i am cleopatra and he is anthony to him Tolile, tolile. Mine, finders, keepers. He properly found me on the internet and then was like, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. And this is not just happening to me and me only. It's happening to so many other Africans across Africa because of the adoration of witchcraft by black people. So much destruction. But South Africa is a judged land. More so, I would imagine, than any other African country because it has gone on right ahead to embrace wokeism too. It is no wonder you've got leaders that are vying for president, literally saying in a stadium filled with people in a country that has got multiple races that he can sing kill the boo at any time, ostracizing a whole chunk of South African citizens, literally threatening their lives that should he become president, they're going to have a very uncomfortable existence. We've already kicked out some Indians out of Durban because of all that looting. Now, we already lost a whole bunch of white people because they moved to Australia. You know that Trevor Noah joke? As soon as apartheid was repealed. And now Julius Malema is threatening whatever remains of white people in this country and telling them, you're going to go when I'm president. Also, bring back, uh, no, what is this? Like bringing back lost lava. Bring back apartheid, but this time around the reverse kind of apartheid where this time around, the persecuted group or the oppressed group are the white people. Now you're going to give them a squinch, eh? A taste of their own medicine. That, that is what Julius Malema is basically telling to all of South Africa. And he's able to say that on a platform because it is only black people that can literally speak such flagrant racist remarks and get away with it. Where they can easily just say, I'm going to kill white people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Only black people get to do that. The more if a, if a white person says that he is Hitler, he is a Nazi, he is unacceptable, he must be in prison, maybe even put on death row, he must be exterminated. But no, when a black person says kill all the white people, now they get to do it. Why? Because they're previously disadvantaged. Black people, get over yourselves. You are disgusting. You're disgusting. And I will put it out there as a black person that used to be proudly black, that I ain't no Uncle Tom. I'm just a very intelligent, observant woman that recognizes the fact that you are disgusting. You are gross. You are like skid marks on an underwear. And in the absence of cleansing yourselves, this world will be a better place. Frankly, without you, you have destroyed each other. And oh, how you love to riot, how you love to march, how you love to complain, how you love to bring down statues, how you love to just go all over the world making other people complain and stand with you. You have made white folks stand with your wicked agenda. You have made, uh, in, literally just in this, just so they can fit in, just in the interest of inclusivity. They have stood with you while you destroy your own countries. So any white person that is woke, any white person that is standing with a black insanity, I'm sorry. You are a, I don't know what they call white people who are standing with black people just because they're scared and that they're going to get called racist. I don't know. Because black people are Uncle Toms. What's the tenement of an Uncle Tom for a white person? How in the world are you going to self-hate so much? You need to call rubbish out for what it is. Is that basic? Inequality is an abomination in the sight of God. While he hated apartheid, he also absolutely hates the fact that black people feel entitled to getting away with murder. So I will say it first, black folk. You are dumb. You are stupid for doing this to oneself. And you are making your own race of people look like they're unintelligent because you are extracting some of your most gifted and some of your baddest women out of the equation because you're competitive. So when then the whole country bombs and falls apart, I'm sorry you had it coming. 
but not before I make this particular speech. I don't know if there is any way where I can sit, lay my buttock down, and actually get a, a decent existence as a black person living among a black people that aren't necessarily trying to kill each other off. I don't know if that place still exists. I think it does. Somewhere in Africa. Somewhere in Africa. There are countries in Africa where people get it. Where they understand what it means to have camaraderie to take care of each other. Mara, South Africa, you're not it. I'm sorry. You are not it. I'm leaving. Should the Lord not rapture the body of Christ, I'm not going to be staying in South Africa for the rest of my days. I'm not doing it. You have destroyed your own country. You're like the Hebrews in the wilderness, twisting around for 40 years because you just don't quite understand what it means to be freed from the land of slavery. You got set free out of apartheid, but you're still twisting in the wind. And it's right now where at the 30 year mark, you need to do another 10 years. And I'm frankly not going to be here to run that lap with you. Yeah. I am leaving, I don't know how, but the Lord is going to take me out of here. No more am I going to be immersed amidst a bunch of black folk that are leaving me to get killed by other black people. So if I must be amidst black people, I will be amidst black people that get what it means to have camaraderie. Another African country, but as for South Africa, I'm sorry, I am done. Pa! I am spitting on the floor of this country. You have destroyed your whole nation. And yet you expect to be given respect by the global conglomerate, by the global citizenship? I'm sorry. Black people in Defila as a conglomerate totality across the world, you are entitled and dumb in the way that you think right now. You need to overcome. We, we over really. Out of racism, many of our countries have come out of some kind of systematic oppression. It is now time to think responsibly. Is that basic? It is now time to think responsibly. And if you won't be responsible, then you will be the very demise of your countrymen. And like I said, as for the white folk or the non-black folk that are standing with this black mindset, it's stupid, it dumb, literally causing black people to wallow in their own vomit. You are the tenement of an Uncle Tom in the days of apartheid. Like a black person that stands with the oppressive regime, but the opposite. White folk that stand with this mentality in black people. You are the tantamount of an Uncle Tom and a systematic oppression for black people. I don't know what the name for it is for white people, but you are that. You cannot stand for this rubbish. In and of yourselves, you need to put your foot down. You need to put your foot down. There comes a point when people just need to be like, enough is enough. And black people, my death is a travesty. I've been pleading, begging God to save my life. So I don't get taken out by some stupid, set-free, rando black person in America. I have been begging for my life. I cried like a baby today, like literally mourning, uh, uh, grunting, begging the Lord to save me because the depression was so real, it was so alive. Another black person. However, his insanity is because of the principalities over his country. And his insanity has been sparked by the insanity of my countrymen, the principalities over my nation. You are busy dancing, dilly dallying in these streets. It is no wonder you can't even wake up to smell the coffee and realize that you're the reason why your whole country is being destroyed because black people. Bottom line is, while most of the money might be concentrated amidst the white folk of this land, bottom line is you're the majority. And wherever it is that a country has got a majority of people, if they are not healthy, the country will fall. South Africa is falling because the one single demographic of people that is the most abundant racial group is fallen. This nation will never rise until black people get cured from their brain disease. You've literally got a brain-eating amoeba in your minds and it is fatal in the absence of divine intervention. That's busy trying to bring back Chris Honey from the dead. Even though he has no pers no, no, he has no right to sing Kill the Boer in a way that Chris Honey had the right. Got on the filling up a stadium. How in the world he even filled out that stadium is beyond me. It's beyond me. I guess it's as much as a celebrity as Beyonce telling church girls to twerk it up a storm. Drop it like a thotty. That's all. That's all that Julius Malema is doing in a stadium. Telling South Africans to become spiritual harlots against their creator. That's it. I'm signing out in Christ's name. Just had to get this off my chest. Thank you for bringing some suicide mission, suicide murder mission, random freak in America that was set free much too early from the prison he ought to have stayed in for the rest of his life. Thank you for bringing and unleashing that little monster on me like I'm in the cabin in the woods and he's the threat to my particular ecosystem. Thank you for putting me in a Hunger Games arena where the threat is coming from another country altogether. I thank you, black South Africans, for putting me in a position to suffer death at the hands of a man so many miles away, so many kilometers away. Thank you. I'm out.